I'm Lola. Hi. Um, first off, I want to thank OCCJ and Open Arms Youth Project, particularly Tim Gillian and Drew Diamond for inviting me out tonight. Uh, don't mind me, I'm a little nervous, but... Um, following all these speakers tonight, my experience is a touch different. I, don't, I haven't experienced racism through my education in my life, but I have experienced prejudice. I identify as a trans woman, meaning I was born as a cisgender male, and I'm transitioning into a female. And one of the experiences I'm going to explain to you guys tonight is when I entered high school, which just finished my senior year, my junior year, so that was like four years ago. Um, I started out at Edison, and you know, boo Edison, but I left Edison for a street school in Tulsa. One of the greatest schools here in Tulsa, I like to think. But every amazing thing has its downfalls. And some of the students when I entered, I entered as Lola. And they knew me from before. And they like to call me it. Even after redirecting them, though my pronouns, my pronouns are she and her. Don't call me it. I'm not an it, I'm a human. Sorry. And being called that struck fear into me. Because I'm, I'm giving you guys some statistics. Um, in 2015, more trans women were killed, beaten, murdered due to hate crimes than in any year. That put fear that I can't go walk downtown with my friends on a Friday night. Last summer, I was pulled over and asked to step out of the car when they asked for my ID and it read Sean Rose and not Lola because I was dressed as a woman. And I was pulled out of the car and I was put in handcuffs. I was impersonating a different person. I was arrested, I was charged, and now I have a record. Because being transgender isn't known to many people, it isn't spoken about, it's hush-hush, it was used as a fetish, and one of my, my biggest goals in life is to bring the knowledge of the trans community. I'm not a freak. I didn't choose this, because I, I mean, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy to go through challenges and to go through discrimination. And hearing all you guys' stories really showed me that I don't have the worst of it, but I like to live by if we all throw our problems into a pile, we take ours right back. <coughs> I apologize. So growing up in, I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I moved here to Tulsa when I was about eight years old, so I've been here for about nine years. Um, uh, I didn't come out as part of the LGBTQA community until my freshman year. And when I did, the hatredism started. You know, horrible words, horrible slurs, and I'm sorry. Um, things that just broke me down as a person. And that's, that's you know, I, I live my life where I want to build people up. I want people to feel happy. And this just broke me down inside. You know, I went through my depression and I went through my substance abuse and all these things because I listened to what those people said to me. Because I took it to heart and I believed it. That I was a freak. I wasn't human and this wasn't right. And I can happily stand up here today and say that those people were wrong. That in December I start my transition and I feel as much as a human as I always felt. So in my freshman year when I was called in, I took it home with me. And I questioned myself and I questioned, is this really supposed to be you? And then at home I had the, oh, yeah, this is wrong, and 
the negative use of religion about why it was wrong. I mean, I'm a Christian all day, every day. Um, but for the longest time, I did not claim a religion because it was used neg negatively towards me. When I discovered Open Arms Youth Project, which is, I'm the youth advocate on the board of Open Arms Youth Project, I discovered a home and a family that loved me for me. And I started working with my community. I started working with Youth Services of Tulsa and the Quality Center and doing outreach. And I've spoken so many times on trans topics and I can't even count anymore. And I've realized that people don't decide who you are. People can't tell you what's right. People can't tell you that what you're doing is wrong or this isn't appropriate or you're a liar or any of that. You have to decide that for yourself. And I decided last summer that I was supposed to be a woman, that no matter how much bullying, hatredism, rude comments, just walking down the street, even <clears throat> that I can always feel good about myself as long as I believe that this is the right path. And I came up here today to tell you guys about my story and it's hard. It's hard to explain something and it was hard for me to understand from the Native American or the Hispanic or the Latino or the Muslim aspects because those aren't me. And I don't expect you all to get it today right off the bat about what it is to be a trans woman, about what it is to be part of the LGBTQA community because I don't know if you're part of that. I don't know if you fall under that spectrum. But I'm up here to bring awareness that this is causing emotional destruction and mental destruction and physical destruction of Tulsan youth. From all the groups I've talked in, all the people I've talked to, I see that it's hurting the kids today. And I can do nothing more but tell them it gets better, but I don't know if it gets better. I haven't been there yet. I haven't seen better just quite yet. But I think it might get better, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> I think so. When I came up here, I'll share a little information with you guys. I didn't want to write anything structured. I didn't want to write a five-page essay about what it is to be a trans woman because I don't think it should be formalized like that. I don't think it, I think it should be shared from the heart. So when I came up here, I was like, okay, I have no idea what I'm going to say to these people staring at me, but yeah. Um, but as a trans woman going through the education system in Tulsa, it was hard. What bathroom do I use? That's awkward because I can't go into the male's bathroom when I'm dressed like a female because there's hate crimes that might happen. I can't go into the female's restroom because of the hate crimes that might happen. And Tulsa schools do not have gender neutral restrooms. It's something we don't have. Well, luckily street school did implement gender, re gender neutral restrooms last year. And we were one of the first TPS schools to do that. And with the help of Open Arms Youth Project and Youth Services of Tulsa and all the counselors and teachers at Street School, I've really discovered my own path. And now I don't define myself just as a trans woman. I don't forget that fact because it has made me who I am, but I define myself as soon to be high school graduate. Tulsa Tech National Junior Honor Society on my path to become a biomedical engineer. And that's my biggest message for everyone here today is don't let the little things define you. Define yourself. If you're going to take a picture, you've got to come to my good side. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, OCCJ.
YST, Open Arms Youth Project, and Mr. Diamond for having me today, and you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you.